Dear Lord, thank you for today. I thank you for this opportunity to come and speak about VBS. I'm thankful for the opportunity to direct VBS. Um, I ask that you would be with us um, this morning and you would move in everyone's hearts and minds this morning, Lord. I pray that you would open our minds to receive the message that you have for us. And if someone in here doesn't know you, Lord, I, I pray that you would work in them this morning and that they would they would come to know you. Because without you, Lord, life is meaningless. Lord, I pray that anyone who doesn't know you would, would come to know you, Lord. And, and I pray one more time for our BBS coming up. And Lord, that you would, you know, having 50 kids there is great. But Lord, if we have 20 kids, if we have 10 kids, if we have one kid, but they come to know you, that's all that matters. So, Lord, I thank you so much. I thank you for your son, Jesus, who died for our sins because without him, we could never be with you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn 
go Lord in prayer this morning Heavenly Father Lord it's your great name we lift up today it's your great name that deserves to be exalted Lord and I pray as we have come through the worship and song today God that it's been a sweet sound in your ear God as we lift up praises to your greatness thank you for your great name Lord I pray as we go into this next part of the worship hour Lord that that uh, you give our people ears to hear the message that is to be delivered, Lord. I pray that as we talk about how great you are, Lord, that it would inspire us, Lord, to live lives worthy of being called your children. Oh, God, speak to our hearts today. We exalt your holy name. You are great, God, in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, worship team. For helping prepare our hearts for the Word of God today. I'm so grateful for what He's done for our church. I'm so grateful that He has people in place to minister to us. How's everybody today? Hmm. All right, a few of you doing all right. That's okay. It'll get better. Um, I'm grateful you're all here this morning. Thank you for coming. Thank you for uh, taking time. Uh, to observe this day set aside so we can come together as a congregation and worship the one great true God. And he is the subject matter this morning. There's nothing better to speak on. Would you all agree with me this morning? Um, the slide was put up earlier. It said, he, had the, the arrow, is greater than I. And there it is right there. He is greater. That is the title of this, of this message. But I want to I wanna share with you uh, there will be a meeting of the board members immediately after the service, the pastor announced. After the close of the service, the board members gathered at the back of the sanctuary for the announced meeting, but a stranger was in their midst, a visitor who had never attended their church. My friend said the pastor, didn't you understand that this meeting is for the board members? Yes, said the visitor, and after today's sermon, I suppose I'm just about as bored as anyone else who came to this meeting. <laughs> Dear hearts, I hope and I pray that uh, I do not bore you this morning with the Word of God, but rather the Word of God would penetrate your hearts today and that you're inspired by this singular thought this morning, that He is greater. He is greater. Uh, there's a text reference on the screen there, 1 John 5, verses 9 through 13. We're going to get to that near the end of the service today. When we do discuss that passage, I, uh, I think you'll understand why I made it my key text but first, I'd like to share a little bit of my heart with you. I'm going to give you a little per personal testimony. Uh, let me look out across the seats here. Sometimes uh, we have some dear friends visit in the congregation, and I, I was looking to see if they're here today. I don't see them, but uh, I want to share this with you. About 14 years ago, my family was um, under a time of great distress. We had, uh, we had some, some serious things happen. Um, the enemy was attacking our family, and we had gone to see um, some of my fam some of my close family in South Texas to get some counsel about that that event that had taken place. And um, as we're driving home from seeking that counsel, um, we're driving down the highway, and we're discussing my wife and I discussing the the thing that we have to deal with, and it was heavy. It was such a heavy thing we had to deal with. Um, and uh, as as we're talking about it. This singular thought comes out of my mouth. He is greater. Whatever we're dealing with right now, baby, it doesn't matter because he's greater than that. And as I said it, I handed her a pen and I handed her a napkin. And I said, please record these words, sweetheart. And in 15 minutes, right about, driving down the highway, a song poured out of my heart from, from God that we needed. And he gave it to us in just the right time. 
And the name of the song, as you might guess, is He is Greater. And that song came out in uh, verses, chorus, bridge, and even the melody to the tune that was supposed to be put to those words. And she wrote it down on this napkin. Um, several years later, I shared that song with uh, the worship minister at... We're getting a little feedback here. Can, should, I, should I stand somewhere else? <laughs> so, several, minutes, uh, several years later, we were, um, I shared that song with the worship pastor at our church. In turn, he shared it with our congregation. And that Sunday, by a divine act of providence, I believe, there was a sweet and godly couple that was attending the church that morning. And they heard the song. And the gentleman uh, and the couple, he came to the worship pastor after the service and he said, that song we sang today, I've never heard it before. He is greater. How do I get a copy of that? And the worship minister looked at him and he said, well, that, that song's not in circulation. That Josh, Josh Otten wrote that song. He said, well, where is he? And he came to meet me. He said, hey, I need a copy of that song. Do you have a copy of it? I said, no, sir, I don't. Uh, this is the first time I've ever heard it sung in a congregation, you know. <laughs> and he goes... Well, we need, to, we need to do something about that. And this, this gentleman had the means to, um, to go take me to a recording studio. And we recorded that song. Uh, you, can, you can find that song on all the major platforms today, shameless plug. But um, my hope really for that song as it ministered to my wife and I that night is that anybody who stumbles across it out there in the world would be encouraged and lifted up in the same way that we were by the message that God is greater. That's the name of that song, He is Greater. Um, fast forward to December 27th, 2024. I was up early in the morning in Dickinson, Texas, my sister's home. We had gone to Dickinson for the, for the holidays, not, not realizing earlier in the month that we'd be there for a completely different reason. Some of you may remember that my dad passed away on Christmas Eve, 2023. So we were there in Dickinson, having experienced that. Uh, praise God we were able to be there, be there for his passing moments. Without a doubt, we experienced the peace of God in our loss. But it was still a time of grieving. And in the midst of my grief, as I'm asking the Lord to speak to my heart from the book of 1 John, he reminds me of these words. He is greater. He is greater. Now, folks, uh, don't, don't get me wrong. I... I would anything that my, my dad would still be here with us on the earth, able to listen to me preach about this thing. But guess what? This sermon doesn't exist if my dad doesn't pass on and I'm digging through God's word for some comfort. So here we are. And that's what God does sometimes. And I'm so grateful he visits us that way. Um, I'd like to invite you to walk with me through this book today. First John. Now, it wasn't very long ago that Pastor Craig walked us through the book, but I found an interesting pattern in the book, and it was <laughs> it's pretty neat and pretty helpful for me. So please walk, walk through it with me today, and we're going to look at how the one true and great God with us is the one who indeed is greater. I want to take you to First John. Let's look at chapter 3 first, if you will. First John chapter 3, we're going to go to verse 18. I'll give you a moment to get there. First John. Chapter 3, verse 18. The Bible says this. Little children, let us, love, let us not love with word or with tongue, but in deed and truth. We will know by this that we are of the truth and will assure our heart before him in whatever our heart condemns us. For God is greater than our heart and knows all things. You see how that might have said something to me that morning? <laughs> God is greater than our heart. Boy, those words jumped off the page at me. He's greater than our heart. In the midst of a grieving and heavy heart, I get to hear from God in his word. He's greater than my heart. You see, from the time we're children, we can see our need for a God who is greater than our heart. Listen to God's summation of our broken hearts in Genesis chapter 8. Genesis 8, 21, God says this. Or the Bible says this, the Lord smelled the, smelled the soothing aroma and the Lord said to himself, I will never again curse the ground on account of man for the intent of man's heart is evil from his youth. And I will never again destroy every living thing as I have done. Little backdrop 
Noah was there sacrificing and worshiping God. He was sacrificing of all the clean animals that God had rescued that day uh, or through that event, the great flood. Noah had built an altar. He was sacrificing to God, and the Lord smelled the soothing aroma. But he makes this statement. The intent of man's heart is evil from his youth. You can see that. Listen to what Solomon says in all his wisdom. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 15 tells us this. Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. The rod of discipline will remove it far from him. This is what Solomon said in Proverbs 16, verses 5 and 6. Everyone who is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Assuredly, he will not be unpunished. By loving kindness and truth, iniquity is atoned for. And by the fear of the Lord, one keeps away from evil. You see, folks, from the time we are young children... The thoughts and intents of our heart are evil. They're not toward God. But God is greater than our hearts, isn't he? Listen to what the prophet Jeremiah says about the heart of man and our great God. Jeremiah 17, verses 9 and 10. Jeremiah says, The heart is more deceitful than all else and is desperately sick. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give to each man according to his ways according to the results of his deeds. Listen to what Jesus had to say about it in Mark chapter 7, verse 20 and 23, 20 through 23. And he was saying, that which proceeds out of the man, that is what defiles the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed the evil thoughts, fornications, thefts, murders, adulteries, And you could keep going, folks. Deeds of coveting and wickedness, as well as deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these evil things proceed from within, and they defile the man. And if you had to deal with all of those things, any of those things, the Bible says that came out of your heart. But be encouraged this morning. God is greater than your heart, He's greater. Listen to what the Apostle Paul says regarding men's heart and our great God. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 and 18, through 18. So this I say, Paul says, and affirm together with the Lord that you walk no longer just as the Gentiles also walk and the futility of their mind being darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their heart. Romans chapter 8, Paul says this, verses 26 and 27. In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he, look at this, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Aren't you grateful for the Holy Spirit this morning? Aren't you grateful that he's greater than your heart? Are there any greater testimonies than these this morning? Are there any greater testimonies that God is greater than your heart, man? Second thing I want to share with you this morning, not only is God greater than our heart, look at 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. As we walk through the book of 1 John, I saw a pattern developing. Check this out. 1 John 4, verse 4 says this, You are from God, little children. And have overcome them because greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. How about that? God is greater than our enemy. He's greater than our enemy. How many of y'all grateful today that God is greater than our enemy? Amen. Amen. A couple of you are. (laughs) How many of y'all glad today that God is greater than our enemy? My God. Lord, thank you so much that you're greater than our enemy. The enemy will attack you, and you've got to be ready. And you've got to remember, you serve one who's greater than him. John chapter 16, verse 33, the Bible says this. These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage. Take courage. I have overcome the world. I'm greater than your enemy. The enemy can't take over on you. I'm greater than him. 1 John chapter 5, verses 3 and 5. 
forgive me, verses 3 through 5 says this. It says in 1 John chapter 5, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is the one who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Folks, if you're walking with God, the enemy cannot take you. He can't stand against you. So I guess that's the big question this morning, isn't it? Are you walking with God? Do you have power over the enemy this morning? Or is the enemy coming after you? Is he coming to steal and kill and destroy in your life? If he is, you need to submit this morning to the one who's greater. In Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 13, Paul gives this testimony about the Lord. He says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you'll be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. The armor of God, Paul says, put on the armor of God. We've heard this preached from this pulpit before, putting on the armor of God. Do you, Christian, do you, believer, do you put on the armor of God? Listen, if you're not putting on the full armor of God daily, I want to know, how are you managing the enemy's attack? How can it be done? The study of the armor of God is is interesting. I'd encourage you to take some time this week to take a look at it. When you do, you'll notice that the Apostle Paul, he references the prophet Isaiah to encourage the church at Ephesus in this regard. It's interesting that Paul quoted Isaiah, and this is why, for, about a peri- for a period of about three years in Isaiah's ministry, God told him, I want you to strip off your clothing, and I want you to walk around preaching in nakedness. Did y'all know that about Isaiah? Isn't that a weird thing for God to tell somebody to do? I mean, don't look around the room and think, oh, I hope God doesn't strip down that person to preach. I haven't seen him work that way lately. But the Bible tells us in Isaiah, for about three years, Isaiah walked around with no clothes on, preaching to the Egyptians and the Cushites. The Assyrians are going to come and take everything from you. You'll be stripped of everything just like me. That was the object lesson for the day. So it's interesting that God would take a prophet who he had told to strip down naked and begin preaching. Stop laughing, Peter. It's not funny. It's interesting that God would take that man, have him declothed for an object lesson. And for us, this many years later. And in Isaiah's nakedness, think about this. Paul references Isaiah's words to talk about putting on the armor of God. Even in Isaiah's nakedness, he was still not uncovered. Isaiah had the armor of God on. And that's why Paul could look back to his words and encourage us. Put on the whole armor of God. It'll be a good study for you if you'll take a, take a minute to look at it this week. Isaiah was naked, but he was not uncovered. He had on the helmet of salvation. He had on the breastplate of righteousness. He had his loins girt around with the girdle of truth and his feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Isaiah would raise up the shield of faith and he would put it in his, in his fighting hand, the sword of the spirit, which is the holy word of God. Do you all put on the whole armor of God every day? Do you put it on? Do you pray it on yourself every day? If you don't start doing it, you will see things happen in your life that you've never seen before. You will see defenses against the wicked one that you have never noticed before. God will start protecting you with his armor if you'll do it. Are you under attack this morning? Think about it this morning. A group this size, undoubtedly there are some who are under attack. Maybe a whole lot of us under attack. If you don't think you're under attack this morning, I want you to do a spiritual wellness check. And let me tell you why. Because the enemy does not often attack somebody who's not a threat to him. You realize that? 
You know what? Let me change that. The enemies. You see, Satan's not omnipresent like our God is, our great God. He can be everywhere all the time, all at once. But not Satan. He can't do that. He doesn't have that kind of power. He's not omnipresent like our God. But there are wicked ones in his army. There are wicked ones in his forces that are coming after you. So are you under attack this morning? Are you? If not, why not? Is it because you're not a threat to the enemy? What are you doing? What are you doing for the kingdom work this morning? What are you doing for God's kingdom that makes the enemy think, oh man, I better go get this guy. I better go get this lady. I better go get this young person because they're, uh, they're, they're making it a little hot on me here. Are you fighting back this morning? Paul tells us in Ephesians 6, we need to be armed with the sword of the Spirit, which is God's holy word. How will you fight the enemy if you don't have the sword in your hand? How will you do it? How can you do it? Do you know the word of God? Folks, that's your, uh, that's your weapon. That's how you come against the wicked one. Study the armor of God this week and put it on and see if God doesn't do something in your life. So we read in 1 John that God is greater than our heart. We read in 1 John that God is greater than our enemy. I want you to look at 1 John chapter 5, verse 9 through 13, our key text. God's testimony is greater than man's testimony. Look at it. 1 John chapter 5, verse 9. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For the testimony of God is this. That he has testified concerning his son. The one who believes in the son of God has the testimony in himself. The one who does not believe God has made him a liar. Because he has not believed in the testimony that God has given concerning his son. And the testimony is this. That God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Praise God. He who has the son has the life. He who does not have the son of God does not have the life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. Listen to me. This isn't a made-up story. This isn't just something that people came up with just to make you feel good. God's Word, and you can stand on the authority of, this, of it this morning. If God said, I will give you eternal life through my Son, it's done, it's written down, it's going to happen. He said, you can know this morning. You can know this morning that you have eternal life. You don't have to wonder. You don't have to guess. You don't have to just hope. You can know on the authority of the scripture, God's word in 1 John chapter 5, you may know that you have eternal life. Folks, grab onto that promise and hold onto it tightly. Listen to Romans chapter 8, verses 33 through 39. It says this, Who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is he who died. Yes, rather who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. Do you see that? God's testimony is greater than man's testimony. Jesus is up there interceding for you. Picture the courtroom. Picture the righteous judge sitting on his throne. And the lawyers are debating with one another over your case. And Jesus stands up as your advocate. He says... I'm going to go to bat for him. I'm in the way, Father. This one's mine. Picture it. He intercedes for us. Look at verse 35. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? It's rhetorical. Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, just as it is written, for your sake we are being put to death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But in all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, praise God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, aren't you happy about that this morning? If you have the love of God in you, if you surrendered your life to Christ, Nothing can come against you, folks. The enemy can attack, but if you are covered, he can't do anything to you. 
Stand against them this morning. Listen to what the author of Hebrews said in chapter 7, verses 23 through 27. Hebrews 7 says this. The former priests, on the one hand, existed in greater numbers because they were prevented by death from continuing. But Jesus, oh, I love those two words. But Jesus, on the other hand, because he continues forever, holds his priesthood permanently. Therefore, he is able also to save forever those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. There it is again. For it was fitting for us to have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens, who does not need daily, like those high priests, to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. And this is why. Because this he did once for all when he offered up himself. Oh, dear friends, this is the great testimony of God himself. And the testimony of God is greater than our testimony. If you came here this morning looking for a sign from God, listen. This is the sign. This is it. He is greater than anything you're dealing with this morning. He's greater than all your fears. He's greater than your debt. He's greater than any burden you're bearing. He is greater than your worries. He's greater than your pain. He's greater than your grief. He's greater than any of the offenses you've suffered. He's greater than your guilty heart. He's greater than all of it. Won't you cast your cares on him this morning? The Bible says he cares for you. Cast your cares on him this morning. If you're a lost sinner this morning and you're looking for one who can save you, come to him today and repent of your sin. He's greater than your sin. He paid for it. Stop lugging it around like a 2,000-pound piece of luggage. Get rid of it today. Come to him. If you're a saved sinner this morning looking for relief from the cares of this world, Come to him today. Repent of your sin. He's greater than your sin. He paid for it. If you're struggling with hurt, if you're struggling with addiction, with pain, with grief, with loss, if you're struggling with hard feelings, you can go on and on and on. You can come to him today. He's greater than all these things. And he'll show you the way to life and to peace. Won't you come to the one who's greater today? Scott, would you come this morning? We're going to wrap this up this morning. Man, I never do this, but I'm going to do it this morning. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes for a moment? Just for a moment. I don't know if there's one in here who doesn't know Jesus. But if you're here this morning, and that's you, you say, I've never, I've never surrendered to God. I've never accepted the sacrifice that Jesus made for me on the cross. I've never come and given my life to him. I don't know him like you talked about, Brother Josh. I don't know him. If that's you this morning, Every head is bowed and every eye is closed. If you want to just lift your hand up, I'd love to meet with you. You don't have to come down here in front of everybody. We can meet after the service. I'd love to show you out of God's word how you can know him. Hopefully I've showed you a little bit of that this morning. But if that's you, just lift your hand up. There's one in here this morning who is struggling this morning. The enemy's been attacking me. The enemy's been attacking my family. I need some relief. I need some help. I'm hurting in my sinful ways. I need some forgiveness. I need to repent. If that's where you're at today, maybe just lift up your hand and I'll come. We we'll send somebody to come pray with you.
Folks, take this word to heart. No matter what you're going through this morning, God is greater than that thing. You can give it to him in full confidence. Let's stand together this morning. We're going to sing. It's a time of response. You got some things to get right with the Lord? You can take time right now. You can take time after the service. It doesn't matter, but right now, this is your time. This is his time. Make good use of it. You stood before creation.
what can I say? What can I do? But offer this heart, oh God, completely to you. Amen. Thank you, Scott. Um, <clears throat> thank you all for being here this morning. It's been a good day with God's people. We want to do one more thing before we close this morning. Uh, if we could call anyone who's attending camp this week, I want you to come forward. I want to give the church an opportunity to pray over you this morning. Anybody who's going to youth camp this week, get up here to the front. We want to gather around you. Church, I want you to come lay hands on them. I want you to come pray over them. This is going to be an exciting week for our uh, youth pastor and his wife and all the people that are helping. It's going to be an exciting week for the young people who are attending. And we want to see God do great things in the lives of these young people. It's, it's a time every year where uh, they can get away from all the, all the junk in this world and really focus on the Lord. And I pray that, uh, that God's going to do some mighty things here. I know he will. I want us as a church to, to cover them as they're going to be traveling some distance. And uh, we want to see God do mighty things in their lives. So if you will, come join us. Let's pray over our campers. Father, we commit these campers to you, their leadership, and all who are going to be ministering to the young people this week. We commit them to you They're in your great hands, and we ask you to do great things because you are the great God, and you're greater. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You are dismissed. <laughs>